Ladies, gentlemen, and adventurers of all ages, Baldur's Gate 3 has had quite the interesting past few days. A full patch that actually contains some pretty meaningful stuff, a community update where the developers comment on the community concerns about all the cut content that has been found, and there's also talks about improving performance, which is of course quite important, not to mention yesterday was the launch of early access for the game on PlayStation, so we have a whole new influx of players climbing on in to experience the glorious masterpiece that this game is. Starting off then, let's just go over over patch 2 and itself. One of the big parts of this patch is something that a lot of players have asked for, which is the ability to remove co-op created characters from your party, allowing you to then replace them with companions if your friends decide to quit playing, or if you just want to rank a secondary save or something like that from the same location where you just run off solo instead. This is a really nice change, honestly. You do this by interacting with Withers in the camp where you can send them away for you. Of course, this doesn't do anything to actual companions because, well, they're a bit special. The second major change in this patch is for Carl and it's pretty massive, and I'm sure almost everyone will appreciate it. Karlak is one of the most beloved companions around for very good reasons, but before this patch there was no quote-unquote good ending for her storyline, as a number of her original endings were actually tied to an area of the game that became cut content. In this patch they created a new path to some different ending choices for Karlak's story that I will not be spoiling here, and they also added some new dialogue with Karlak in Act 1 and Act 2 as well to make it just a little bit more interactive, make that story a little bit Bit more fleshed out, which is awesome for those who love having Karlak around, which is most people, honestly. However, the fact that it is added this late means that for people who are only going to do one playthrough, they will likely never actually get to experience this, which is sad. That said, better late than never, of course, lovely to have it, and it is at least here before the PlayStation people got their hands on the game, so they get to have that experience in their first playthrough if they choose to. Not to mention, welcome to all the PlayStation players, you get to play the game now, welcome! Then the other major changes were performance optimizations just across the board on everything, though they said elsewhere that this patch would affect Act 3 more than any other part of the game, which is of course a pretty big deal and probably the right choice, because Act 3 was where performance would really actually dip the most given the scale and density of things going on in that area. On top of this, they also reduced the size of save games for Baldur's Gate 3, which is just nice quality of life. Not even something that will affect you in-game, but definitely not a bad thing by any means either. Past this, some sneaky but notable changes within this patch are actually to do with the UI, an option to delete all but the latest save for each campaign if you are having storage issues, new icons to show you when items are equipped versus unequipped, item rarity filters in your inventory so you can search for things properly, which is great, then just some other nice quality of life UI changes too, but generally these are things that they did to improve the game. Even if it's in a more minor way, it all adds up and it shows they are willing to make these smaller changes to actually improve the game, which considering community reaction saying how good it already was at launch, is a really good sign for the future of this game's patches. Aside from this, it was pretty much just bug fixes, but just like patch 1, there were a buttload of bug fixes in this patch, was fantastic to see as well. All in all, this is a really, really good patch for us. Maybe not quite as meaty as patch 1, but it affects some really important stuff nonetheless. Has a lot of performance improvements in it as well, and bug fixes too, so it's all good as far as I'm concerned. Now the question is simply when and what is going to be in the next patch. And well, while we don't have any hints as to the release date of patch 3, we do know some things that the team is working on with intentions of a near future release, and that would imply being pretty likely for the next patch, so let's have a look at the community update that they posted a couple of days ago as well. A lot of this post from the developers that we have here was actually related to the idea of cut content, which simply means content that they created while making the game, but then did not release in the end products. With a lot of community discussion happening around this recently, as we had noticed just so many things in the files, or things that were around back in the early early access that was Act 1 only, and the list that is there is actually really quite long, it's quite imposing to see, it includes entire areas that were cut from the game, entire storylines for companions, it's nuts, all that kind of stuff, and it's actually quite major, all the things that we're missing. Here they are trying to put out their perspective on it though and explain what they have seen talked about. And they have split it into three sections, performance, bugs, and UX, or user experience. As far as performance, they say the game is ambitious, and it absolutely is, that's reasonable. But what this is leading to here is the idea that a lot of ideas were tried because they wanted to do it, but then they had to be left behind, and that is some of what we have found. Part of this as well is just rampant performance issues in Act 3, as a lot of things that were cut from this area were because they were actually making it worse. And I think it's safe to assume that part of the reason that they did this was to make the game actually run better in the area where it currently runs the worst. They have also committed to working on performance, though they did it in both of the patches that we have so far, and here comes our best guess on the timeline of Patch 3 in this little section here, where they specifically say that they will also be working throughout September to improve performance in Act 3 further with new technology. And the throughout September, to me, implies that we have at least two 
shipping patches to come this month, and if they are close in scale to patch 1 and patch 2, then we actually have quite a lot of good coming our way, and not too long in the future either. Their second section here was bugs, and it seems like this was a really massive one for them. There are of course tons of bugs in the game, it's a massive game, it's just a thing that happens when your game is this big, but these specific ones that they are referring to here are the ones that block entire interactions, cut off conversations, or areas. Some things that we believe to be cut content are actually just interactions that were bugged into not happening. Others that were actually cut, they are working to fix, for example, Carlac in patch 2 getting more ending options to her story, but there are multiple similar instances that they also talk about here. Then we have user experience, and this is their blanket version of saying that they did a lot of different things, they tried a lot of things, tested a lot of possibilities, and they delivered a final product that they believed best fit their vision, didn't muddy it, nothing unnecessary, just cutting it down to make it the best version of the pieces that they already had to put together. And that is an absolutely fair response as well, considering how the great the game actually is an end product. A big part of the issues that I mentioned before is bugged event triggers. For example, Minthara had whole massive companion storylines that the community believed to be cut content, but apparently according to this blog, it is simply a bug that has blocked the interactions from continuing, and thus the rest of the story just never plays out because the dialogue never happens. Then we also have comments about the epilogues that were cut too, which is a pretty big deal. The response about the epilogue is simply one of choice. They felt it improved the game experience to cut what they did down to what they have, and while I do wish we had a lot more of those epilogue voice lines that were cut out, because there was almost an hour of voice, by the way, that was cut, as it sounds like it would just be fun to sort of have your story wrapped up through some of the more major choices that you made throughout it, you know? Past that, they talk about how the development of the game has been a little bit odd, with the different release dates moving around, different choices had to be made over time, and the team making it has grown as well, to be bigger, and thus they had more scale to work with too, so they cut out some things to make room for other things, and they're very happy with the result of all this. And then past that, they just give us a little bit of what to expect from them from this point forward. First, they commit to fixing bugs that they find as quickly as they can, which they definitely have been doing a pretty great job of so far. Second, that they will start to make genuine improvements to the game based on our feedback. Rather than just fixing what is already there, they want to actually improve the game. And you can already see the beginnings of this in patch 2 with the UI changes that I was talking about earlier. Those are just lovely quality of life things that absolutely came up from players talking about the game, so seeing stuff like that actually implemented in the patch is just the cherry on top of this lovely game. Finally, then we just have a fun tweet from Sven confirming the origin of the term Tav, which is the term that most people use to describe the player character. This caught on quite a bit in the community, but it is very strange to actually trace the origin of it until now, as it is brought up by the voice actor of Palsen, of course, because why wouldn't it be him who brings it up? The name Tav is derivative of the original name of the development build for the game, which was Gustav, named after Sven's dog. And he simply confirms that this is the case. He says, yeah, that's where it came from. Just a nice bit of a background on a term that you'll see come up in the Baldur's Gate community sometimes. And that's pretty much everything for today then, everyone. Of course, as there is more news to share, I will continue to share it with you in the future if it comes up. How do you feel about Patch 2 then, and all the plans they've talked about related to the future of patches for this game? Is it enough for you? Is it improving an already amazing game, or is it just not doing enough to fix your gripes with Act 3? Either way, I hope you enjoy your continued adventure within Baldur's Gate 3, as we'll all be waiting with open arms to see what our next patch is like. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye